It's actually funny that I'm using this cup. You'll find out why in the next few minutes. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 23, the season finale of Supernatural season 12. And I'm happy this season is over. Boy, did they start to realize in the final few episodes that the entire British Men of Letters storyline was pointless, derivative, and completely not compelling. So then what they tried to do is they tried to make the Nephilim story, the clearly much more interesting storyline, the priority. But the problem was this episode was also riding off of what had happened in the previous season, which they make references to, and it was also riding off of the high of five, which is what the previous season was living off of as well. So what does this season finale do? It needlessly kills off characters for woo factor. The amount of people who senselessly died in this season finale was purely for shock value. Not story-wise, not narrative-wise, purely for shock value. Because when you think about what these characters have been through and how unceremoniously, how uncreatively they were knocked off, this was not good. So the entire episode is about the birth of the Nephilim and the final showdown once again with Lucifer. And first off, the girl who's having the baby, very convenient how her whole birth giving scenario is ah screaming one minute then totally fine sipping some tea and then going back to Arr! again that's not how childbirth works also she's basically come to the realization at the end is like yeah i'm gonna die having childbirth um excuse me you decided to keep this child because it saved you from committing suicide so you were f on the side of saying yeah he'll save me he'll protect me now you're like yeah i'm ready to die what the hell happened how did you even come to this? It's like, that was a terrible narrative turn. And then this weird time vortex that is purely introduced because they didn't know how to finish this season any other way. Because there's this time rip that shows a world where Sam and Dean were never born, which was kind of interesting. There was a Bobby Singer cameo, which was, again, kind of interesting. And this was a legitimate way of figuring out how to trap Lucifer, mind you. It came from the Nephilim, who somehow as a child knew of a way to somehow do this. But either way, this time vortex is the tool of which the brothers use. So what they do is they lure the Lucifer through the door and then Dean shoots Lucifer with the gun that other type dimension Bobby Singer had and apparently you don't see him again. So what do they do? They kill him for his gun? <laughs> so anyways, there's apparently this spell that needs to be done that literally comes out of nowhere. Like they didn't even really talk about doing it. We're not explain anything of the process. See, if you want a good example of how you set up a plan and how you do it in a cool narrative way, season five, we had the plan laid out through previous episodes and in the final one, they kind of came to a head and we as the audience knew what had to happen. So when things went wrong, it was much more interesting. This one, we have no idea what the spell, like all of a sudden Crowley's doing a spell. Like, oh, cool. When did you guys pull this out of your ass? How do you guys know to open up dimensional rifts? How do you even know how to close dimensional rifts? So then Crowley does the spell. Dean shoots that Lucifer, it doesn't do anything. He's getting beat up. And then all of a sudden Crowley says, yeah, it requires a life. Bye boys, ugh. What the fuck was the point of that? Not only was that completely anticlimactic, considering you had killed off Crowley two, uh, two episodes ago, this was completely needless because the door doesn't close. The door stays open for enough for more plot convenient assets to happen. The second plot convenience is when Cass, for some reason, walks through the door, walks up to Lucifer, even though he can see Crowley's dead, which clearly means the plan has enacted. He goes up, stabs Lucifer, turns around, walks back through the door, and then Lucifer just follows behind him and stabs him as he comes out. Second death number two that was totally pointless. One that was so anticlimactic, I can't believe either one of them are dead. If one of them is dead, maybe, but I don't believe both of them are dead because it was so bad. I just, 
I was sitting there going, "You, that's how you kill Cass? That is how you kill him. Because when I'm thinking about how Cass died the first time is when he got blown... Well, okay, he died a lot of times before he actually got blown up in the season finale of season 5. But we all remember that. Throws the thing. Hey, ass butt. And they got blown up. And we were all like, holy shit, because then Bobby Singer died. If you want to do interesting, holy shit, kills... That's season five is how you do it. Not this lazy ass shit writing. Oh yeah, by the way, Rena apparently just got burned to a crisp at the beginning of the episode, not even on screen. So that's was the third death that didn't mean shit. And then after Cass has died, then Mary, who for some reason, a gun that was shooting angel knives at Lucifer that had a hundred rounds or something like that, doesn't do anything, but the old lady giving him some good old brass holy knuckles apparently is enough to punch Lucifer through the door and then the door conveniently closes. Absolute bullshit. I'm going to call this out right now. I was sitting there doing this the whole time. What a fucking disappointment. I'm straight up honest with you guys. This was lame. If they had focused on this storyline, if they hadn't wasted their time with the British Men of Letters bullshit, and they made these deaths mean more, or actually have some sort of emotional weight, I couldn't give a shit. Because I was like, wow, you killed Crowley. You killed Misha. You, you can't just kill characters without giving a purpose to them. Otherwise, the death means nothing. And that's what these deaths meant. Nothing to me because how how terribly they were done. And in the end, I do admit, the idea of the Nephilim being there in the room and looking really creepy and Sam looking at him, that was the best part of the episode because that gave me hope that the next season could be better than this one. And then I saw that there's an episode that's gonna be a mix of Scooby-Doo. They don't give a shit anymore. It almost feels like that. I don't wanna say that they don't, but clearly they do enjoy doing what they do but holy fuck, this show does not really care about what it's me trying to do anymore. Terribly written deaths, a climax that was convenient and plot written as hell, and a overall very lackluster, predictable, and just non-emotionally non connective season finale. I'm going to give this season finale a 2 out of 7, because that's the two shits I gave about it. First one was seeing the other dimension, thinking that was interesting, and then the, bit, the Nephilim at the end. This season had a little bit of a build-up to something interesting, and we literally got something almost worse. I think almost worse. I would say at least season 7 finale with Dick, that actually had a, a satisfying narrative ending in terms of how it was written. This was just... This was bland. It was ridiculous and bland. Anyways, guys, that is my review for the season finale of Supernatural Season 12. I will do my Season 12 review if I haven't pissed you all off yet. But, yeah. I don't know if you guys are happy with that. That's all, that's all good on you guys, but I was really disappointed with this. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time.